Hey, so, uh, how are you? It's, uh, <laughs> hey, Eric. How is everybody? It's Christmas Eve, isn't it? I'm really losing track of the days here. <laughs> Good to hear. Um, I just need to find a little bit of reference and then we can get started. We had a super long day yesterday. Um, I did sleep well, but I feel like I need more sleep. Have you ever felt that way? You like, <laughs> you still get your eight hours, but you're like, it wasn't enough. <laughs> These are cuties. Let's do some of these guys. I like them. Very cute. Um, what's up, Lucy? <clears throat> Merry Christmas Eve. If y'all celebrate that. You know, we'll go with some panty and stocking. Why not? Do this one too. I hear ya. I hear ya. Eight hours is sometimes not enough. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. I'm feeling it now. <laughs> <clears throat> Feels like it should be. I think I need uh, fuel. After the stream, I'll probably go and get some uh, some serious food. Maybe a nice burrito. Breakfast burrito. Right? But I do it in style. Ooh. Yeah, good Christmas Eve to you all as well. Thank you, thank you. Uh, let's get a couple more in here and just see if there's anything else. We'll take some of the the cartoon proportions that I like. A lot of people usually draw as uh, Splatoon characters. There's a couple artists that are just... I don't know what it is about Splatoon. <laughs> people just draw some really cool stuff. Do you have a Discord server? Uh, unfortunately, no. I, I used to have a Discord server. Um, but I shut it down because I couldn't find... You know, I still work part-time. This is kind of a second job. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so I, I can't do this full-time quite yet as much as I would love to. Um, 
and so it was really hard to like do already what I'm already doing like making videos and editing now I'm streaming on top of it uh, but doing all that and then trying to maintain a discord community it was like I had made events and then I like forgot them <laughs> or like uh, uh, because I just had too much going on and I just felt really bad um, it just wasn't what I wanted it to be so the live streams are kind of a replacement for the community that discord had um, and I hope that we can do more stuff I've been thinking about that more of how to replace that discord community I was thinking of potentially making reddit a reddit um, not a reddit through like its own a reddit page a lot of streamers have that and they can even go to their own reddit page and like look through it to see what people have posted and it's very simple in comparison to discord <laughs> Um, but I know there are some people who have a desire to post things, um, but I need to decide if I even want to do that. Um, so we shall see, uh, Discord's probably not coming back. I also stopped it. Uh, you, I mentioned it, I think in the last stream, but I also stopped it because Discord is scraping. I mean, pretty much everywhere is now. But Discord is going to start training AI on people's stuff that they put into chat. So I didn't want to contribute my chat stuff to Discord's like AI nonsense. Hey, Terror. Who are the artists for these picks? Do you have links? <laughs> um, yeah. It was right when they announced it where I was like, oh, okay, I'm gonna not use Discord anymore. That was like the final nail in the coffin. I was like, should I stop Discord? Like, can I maybe bring it back and devote more time to it? And then they said that and I was like, ah, ksh, destroy it. <laughs> um, bear with me. It's actually, let me turn on the heat because it's cold. My hands are like not, you know, it's too cold. Your hands like won't move the way you need them to. Hi, <sighs> Terror. Are we getting the icon today? Um, what do you mean by the icon? Like the emojis? uh and lucy i would have to do some <laughs> work to get you the let me see if a lot of these artists i get off of uh oh it's not in the corner on this one a lot of these artists i get off of weibo uh so if you look in the corner you see right here it's a little hard to see it looks like uh this okay it looks like at i don't know how to draw these symbols uh looks like that <laughs> Yeah, chibi socks. Uh, <laughs> probably we're not there yet. I need to get a little bit more familiar with these proportions. Uh, I can try to let you know, though, Lucy, on every one of these who the artist is. See, this is a, what one thing Discord would be great for, right? Is like pasting links, because I can't do it in chat, right? Because I think YouTube flags any of that stuff. Um... So like a reddit thread would be easy because we could just pin a reddit thread like for today's stream links <laughs> or something.
We're just gonna draw a regular. Regular ear. There's a thing called Milanote. You can create a template that will help with sharing the reference. Milanote. Let me look it up real quick, Terror. The Evernote for creatives. So I can share like a page, Terror, with people. Like, it, it would just be like a website link for everybody. Almost like Figma. Yeah, because a Lucy, like, for Lucy asking for this reference, all I would have to do is go to my Weibo and then copy-paste the link. <laughs> Rather than, like, trying to give you <laughs> Japanese or Chinese characters that... Like, my keyboard can't even type those, so... <laughs> it's like... Uh, you would have to have like a, a Japanese or Chinese keyboard. I think you could set one up or something. I really wanted to always learn Japanese. I, I memorized the hiragana. That's like as far as I got. They have different templates and you can share it. Oh, okay, cool. I'll look into this. This might be a really good like middle ground uh, while I figure out what to do. That way if anybody asks for anything, I can just drop it in here. Thank you very much. I'll favorite it and I will check it out. Here. Try it. Seems like there are people interested in Discord. Yeah. we. I mean, the Reddit thing sounds like a good idea, but again, I know it sounds so easy and stupid, but like, it, it requires more thought because, uh, you know, every place is a little, like, it's a nice little community, so it has to be watched over and cared for. Um, it's like it's like getting a dog or something, right? Like I don't want to get a uh, a community dog and then neglect it. <laughs> I have to take care of it, so it's another thing that's uh, added to my plate, and I have to make sure that I am I have the resources to do that. So what are you guys doing for a holiday? Anybody have any specific plans? You guys just gonna hang out? We're not really doing much here. Uh, our, our family is kind of all in different places this year, so. We are just going to let me see. Oh, this might be too small. What are we gonna do? What do we say? We're gonna cook some food. We're gonna put on some movies. Uh, just have a nice little small family day. <laughs> um, 
and potentially make some and or decorate some cookies. Hang out, gonna try to find some tamales. Oh my god, dude. Tamales are... That was one food. I, I married into a Mexican family. <laughs> uh, my wife introduced me to tamales. And I am very sad that I slept on that food. <laughs> Did not know about it. Hi, guys. Give me two seconds, guys. I gotta wipe down some paws. The, the boys are back. We use these little wipes to wipe down their paws. <laughs> that way they'll bring in so much gross stuff in the house. Come here, river boy. Come here. Dog dad duties. Oh, good boy. Good boy. Yeah. Yeah, you go for it, too. I do these. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ooh, excuse me. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> holiday so you know <laughs> have a little bit more um relaxed stream today guys all right i feel like these proportions are not the head is humongous we need to kill the size of this a little bit Maybe I should have increased the size of the body. <laughs> well, no, we'll go. We'll go with the size for now. Hi. Hey, don't bother Keanu. Stop it. Stop. Stop. Hey. Hey. No. Are you okay? Are you okay? Stay. Stay. Nanu, come here. Are you okay? Okay, you're good, you're good. Hey, stop. We need to slow down. What did I say? We're uh we're boarding this dog. He's got a little bit more puppy energy. This is our dog Keanu. Hi, you need to relax, okay? Good boy, but you need to calm yourself, okay? Don't bother piano too much. <laughs> hey, piano, go to your bed. Go to your bed. Come on up. Good boy. Oh, hey, hey. Okay, okay. Lay down. Don't put your paw. Ah, ah, ah. What are you doing? <laughs> Come here. Come here. Ow. Bad boy. Lay down. Down. Jesus. Stop. You're gonna hurt somebody. You already hurt me and Keanu. Oh, crazy dogs. Okay. Yeah. 
really got me on that one. Not bleeding, so I'm okay. Uh, Lucy, my family will go out, but I'll just stay home. <laughs> you gonna play some games or something? Or do you read, or what do you do, Lucy? You spend the time. Just draw. <laughs> hey, that's great. Most people kind of, I feel like, give up around the holidays. They're like, oh, I'm not going to get any better before the new year, so I'll just wait and relax. So that is, it's brave and admirable, in my opinion. to do the giant sneakers just do regular <laughs> do have to increase the size of this though I'm over that phase thankfully now I'm just taking my time to learn stuff great I, I definitely was in that phase for a long time. <laughs> it's like the discouragement phase. <laughs> All right, those proportions look better. Give her long legs. There is quite a big uh, tilt to the rib cage. I got older, I got some wisdom stats. <laughs> Very good. Put some stats into wisdom, that was. That was smart. Must have already had some intelligence bonuses.
Trying to rush through stuff never helped me, and doing the same thing expecting a different outcome is insanity. True that. I think that happens a lot with art especially too, because we just don't know what else to do. <laughs> Shams, I appreciate everything you do. Keep going. Thank you, Shams. <laughs> I'm doing my best. Trying to stay productive even during the holidays, you know? It's gonna be a bit closer. I actually want that proportion, so we'll do that. Uh, now I'm having fun doing art, like actual fun. It's been a blast trying to stay productive while eating Christmas food. <laughs> I know it is, it is a really cool shift to actually have fun with your art and not be beating the crap out of yourself for being terrible. Like I still have days where I'm disappointed and I'm like, this is not where I should be or whatever, but uh, for the most part now it's like really cool learning. And then I'm able to see the progress uh, it's it's very nice I think the longer that you do this, the harder it is. Like, especially if you're not uh, as good as you want to be, the harder it is to uh, be okay with the fact that you're not as good as where you want to be. Which is why a lot of people give up because they don't really apply themselves as much as they need to um, because they don't have the tools like they don't know how to create a habit and all that so they kind of fiddle away with it for a few years and they might get decent um, but not like professional level good and so they're just always continuously disappointed and then eventually they stop Because it's just like, the pressure is too much. And I, you know, <laughs> I definitely would say I'm one of the extreme cases where I'm the pressure should be too much, but I've found a, like a healthy place, kind of like you, Lucy. So it's not uh, so traumatizing, and I can get through the fact that I'm not good or not where I want to be, and get better. Tear after drawing a tablet for months. Yesterday, drawing a sketchbook was pressed on the pencil to control Z think it was my digital pen <laughs> uh, that's not as bad as when I was when I was drawing on the iPad a bunch uh, that you double tap the screen or excuse me you tap the screen with two fingers to undo and I did that to my sketchbook like a lot um, I would always I'd screw up and be like on a piece of paper 
Uh, <laughs> that was embarrassing. I'm glad no one was watching me draw then because I did it a lot, a lot. Uh, it just happens. It's muscle memory. Shams, uh, do you have any advice for writing story? Because I'm trying to be an artist and an author. Oh yeah, of course. Those things can sometimes go... I mean, a lot of times they go hand in hand, especially if you're trying to create your own story to, to design characters and stuff like that. Um, I have... I took a class with uh arguably i would say he was my favorite teacher um and as far as i know he never taught this class again um but he was the best at it uh marshall vandruff have you ever heard him usually you see him teaching like animal drawing or perspective he taught us uh visual storytelling and good God, that was a that was an amazing, amazing course. Um, obviously, there's a visual component to it. Uh, visual storytelling. Um, he didn't really teach writing so much, uh, but like developing a story and characters in the world, um, he definitely did. Uh, go into a lot of that. I'd have to look back. I bet you I still, I think I still have the notes from the class. I'll probably share them. We could have like a day where we talk about story and world building and or building characters and stuff. Um, what is there anything specific? Because writing story is a very big, broad. <laughs> Uh, topic which we can definitely like have a day where we talk about it and you might pick up ideas but trying to answer your question um, I just want to help you maybe get started or something um, are you trying to come up with characters or build out the world um, try to Get something a little more specific for me so I can point you in the right direction. Um, I can tell you why you think of that. I can tell you an interesting story about um, uh, one of my teachers for character design. He told us when you when you think about story for characters um you want to see how they they need to like balance with each other and he used um i know jk rowling sucks but this is <laughs> this is the best example i've got uh he used harry potter as an example um so when you designed those three main characters harry hermione ron uh, he said that they all play off of each other in a really good way. They kind of coalesce in the fact that they need each other, in a sense. Um, so, Harry is in this world where he has no family. He has, uh, but he has a bunch of money, <laughs> right? He finds out he's rich. Um, Ron has no money. Um... But he has a huge family and uh oh and the last thing for them harry has always been the center of the spotlight whether he wanted to or not and ron has always been overshadowed by because he has such a huge family so the two of them through ron through harry um ends up getting a spotlight cast on him he's now a member of his family that that gets attention <laughs> he also theoretically um is like more wealthy by having harry in his life um even if it's embarrassing for him at times uh and then through ron harry gets a family that he never had and kind of a brother in a sense as well and friends <laughs> and then hermione fits in um 
by being like she's she's very smart uh and she also she kind of was an outcast a little bit at the very beginning of the story because she didn't really have friends people found her annoying uh ron and harry kind of needed someone who was um who was intelligent and would keep them on their toes and keep them in their books and that was Hermione and through them Hermione gained friends so they're they coalesce in this nice way hi Eamon I love your art thanks for supporting Palestine God bless you of course I will always support Palestine I'm trying to say like I'll always support uh, people who are being oppressed, regardless of it. There's a lot of stuff happening, not just in Palestine, so, you know, and they need our support to speak up. I appreciate it, Iman. I hope you are staying safe during the holidays. Uh, okay. Try to draw in the eyes here. Shams, was that interesting? I don't... <laughs> I hope that was interesting. Um... Money, Lucy. Hi, Mr. Fahrenheit. Shams, let me know if that was uh, helpful at all. And then, like I said, if you have anything more specific about story, I can definitely help you. I've never had to talk about story before, so that's, uh, that's an interesting one. Like, I have a lot of information rattling up in here from, from art school and art classes, but... Um, like when you actually speak it and teach it and talk your truth to the things that um, you know you've been taught on, uh, it's a different experience. Like you learn what you really know when you try to teach it. That's why they tell you teaching is a great learning tool. Because if you don't know it, you'll find out when you try to start teaching it. Hey, four. Happy holidays. Hope you're doing well. I'm glad I could catch so many of you before uh, everybody starts diving into their holiday plans. Shams, that's really great. How about building a world? Because I'm writing a story I reached to chapter 13, but now f fixing the world like the roles, etc. Okay. I'm assuming roles you mean like um like characters in the in the world uh though i mean the way i approach world building is kind of similar to to characters right so if you have if you're talking about roles i'm assuming you mean like um Maybe not different characters, but different, like, uh, species and kingdoms and, uh... Oh, rules. Oh, you mean the rules to your world. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, 
So that depends on your story, right? If your story really depends on the rules of your world, because what one of the traps of like world building, right, is you start coming up with the story and you start defining the world, but then you feel like you need a definition for every little thing and it starts getting you back to it like pulls you all the way back to like okay and then the creator of this universe was the the seven gods of of whatever and you're just like okay i've gone way too far uh it can become very complex too soon and you should really be focusing on the story that you want to create yeah i i trust me i did that a bunch um when i was trying to come up with my own story and uh it, I don't know why it happens. You just feel like you need to have an explanation for everything and you pull back into like how the world was created just to like tell your team see that tiny story in this big world. Um, and that's okay. It's really great to be that creative, but you need to hone in and focus on your story and then decide what parts of that bigger part of it are actually important that you need to flesh out. Um, and you'll you'll typically you'll find that that stuff was not as important as you had made it out to me but sometimes the story requires it right like if you have a story about how um your main character like what is a uh, god of war right he goes and kills all of the gods right so his your that story relied on the fact that you figured out who the gods were and what they did and how they created the world right um they didn't again they they found ways where you didn't have to get super specific into it because we already know about some mythology but you did need to know about the gods but if you're telling like a regular story where you don't need to know about that stuff um I shouldn't say a regular story if you're t <laughs> if you're telling a simpler story that doesn't go super complex into the way that the world is designed um you don't need to mention you know how the universe was created or whatever um and if you really want to get into that stuff like some deep fantasy books like um i don't know i think lord of the rings gets into a little bit religion and stuff every every group like the elves and the humans and everything they all have different beliefs so you can start getting into those systems um but again that would come after i feel like If your story needs a whole page of text and lore in order to make the reader understand, they're not going to read that. Some of the story is like a comic. Yeah, kind of. Um, yeah, and even even like God of War's story, like it, it was very simple, even though it deals with like complex gods and building of the world, right? It was just this guy goes on a rampage to get revenge um, against the gods, basically. But it's simple. It's not really that complex. Every story that you should create, I was told you should be able to come up with like a an elevator pitch to it. So it's like a two sentence thing that makes your story sound interesting. And if you can't simplify your story into like a two sentence thing, it's too complex. And, and trust me, they do this with every movie. Um, so if you've seen a movie and you're like, there's no way they could have done that. Like, uh, I'm trying to think of a movie that's really complex. Can't think of any movies right now. <laughs> I don't know. If somebody has an example. Uh, but yeah. Uh, pretty much all movies or all comics or whatever they can be summarized in whether they have a lot of depth or not I think the movie adaptation of Lord of the Rings did a good job of balancing out the lore that keeps the viewer engaged yeah exactly but the basic premise of the Lord of the Rings whether or not there's a lot of other stories happening or the complexities of everything is literally just about this all all the communities of the world basically coming together so that they can destroy evil 
from this ring and bring it to Mount Doom once and for all. And you can fit that in with like one to two sentences. Indiana Jones. I forget the plot of Indiana Jones. <laughs> but Indiana Jones movies are pretty simple, right? It's just he wants Indiana Jones wants to get a treasure or an artifact. There's not too much complexity. When I write, I don't think, I mean, it's like it comes to me. If I don't write, I'll forget it. But now I've reached a point where I need to think about the details and the character stories. So that's totally fine. Like doing a whole, um, what is it? Like a brain dump of everything you know or want to tell in your story. I can go ahead and do that. Um, like you don't need to think super hard about it. That's probably, you know, not a, it's not a bad thing. A lot of times when people create characters, especially for the first time, like they're not really thinking. They're just like, okay, going on instinct, kind of, uh, using all the training that they've had up until this point. Uh, but then when it comes time to start fleshing out details, that's when you got to start thinking and start developing parts of your story. So, um, you know, if you're telling a story, you have to center it around key characters, right? Um, but there has to be some sort of focus. So now, once you have all that, that world building dump out of the way, now you have to organize it. And then add the details to to the parts that you really want to focus in on hmm. uh, for instance i like the where is it i can't like tell you the whole thing because this is <laughs> i would say it's proprietary kind of but i'm trying to do my own um, I can tell you the elevator pitch. Let me see if I got it here. So the Cinnamentos comic, I think I've shared here. Um, once or twice at Sham, I don't think you have seen it. So let me bring it up. A while ago, when I was working at Naughty Dog, I made 12 comics for this thing called Cinnamon Toast. This is the original version of me. <laughs> Um, I had a lot of fun with it. Um, and then this was the first strip. Yeah, Mr. Fahrenheit, I was doing QA, quality assurance. Uh, I did a lot of testing, bug testing and stuff. This was a good time. Um, but yeah, I had, I had worked on like, the Last of Us 2 for a while. Most of my time there was working on um, Uncharted The Lost Legacy. The like, spin-off with Nadine and uh, Chloe. And then I spent some time working on The Last of Us 2 and testing that. And some time testing their multiplayer. Which I just heard was cancelled. Um, but yeah, it was a good time. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, it's really not that hard to get a job as a QA tester. Naughty Dog is definitely one of the better companies to do that with. Um, the pay is not the best, but you know, it is what it is. Um, it, they still treat us really well. Uh, so yeah, I redid this story and actually, I because I wanted to turn it into a real story and not just be weekly joke bites although i still wanted it to be that in a sense too so my uh i haven't really shared this i used to love calvin and Hobbes. i don't know if anybody read or I didn't used to love it. i still love it i have the big box set did anybody read calvin and Hobbes? it's just such a good comic it's just not running anymore 
Um, let me see if I can find this here. <sighs> so this is a temporary sketch. This is a box and I can find the damn thing. Sign. Here we go. I don't have it anymore. I was looking for, I think it's called the log line when it's the, um, when you have that like two sentence thing that describes what the story was. And that was like one of the first things I did because it helped me hone in on my story. And the, it brings you always back to the focus of your story. Oh, there it is. So, Shams, this is this is my story's logline. Is fresh from living his whole life with his family, a young man tries to make it on his own when he unknowingly slips into a depression and begins hallucinating a talking fox that introduces him to a world beyond his own. That's my elevator pitch. So if I were to present that to someone... Or I was to write like a description um, somewhere, like an Amazon listing for the comic, right? That would probably be of some to some degree in there, um, and it has a lot of like ties to Calvin and Hobbes. Anyone read the world famous comic strip? Yeah, exactly. You'd be surprised. Some people don't know what it is. Um, so I wanted like a, a, like I'm not a, it's like Calvin and Hobbes for adults in a sense, but then adding my anime and manga influences. So I wanted like a, a furry persona, <laughs> so a little animal chibi thing. So this is, was one sketch. I haven't actually uh, finished his design yet, but this was supposed to be him, uh, the fox. I just hadn't gotten around to it yet. But that helped hone in my story, and I was able to find, like, a cohesive balance to it. And I I have, like, an overarching, like, much larger, deeper story. Um, so I could probably compare it to, like, if you ever read One Piece, um, it was, it started out super simple, but he's added such rich depth to his lore and his story and I kind of he had built that out originally but like you wouldn't know about it in the beginning of the story and that's trying what I have tried to do is like drop little nuggets in there but also have this very large overarching story and then um, start it very simple so it sort of draws people in um, with its simplicity and then gives them more to sort of like feast on with its complexity um, and I think people appreciate that when you do world building like if you start too complex you're not going to draw people in um, <laughs> hey hey can you close the door oh yeah <laughs> yeah if you start too complex you're not going to draw people in because people like clear simplicity and when it's too complex, it's too confusing, you walk away. So the more you can simplify something and make it clear, draw somebody in, get them interested, uh, it's just easier for you to understand and it's more compelling. And then they're, uh, they're invested in that world. Then you can start dropping complexity like um, that people will actually be interested in. So all that stuff sham that you were saying was like you went too far with the world building like if, if you were developing the gods and how the world was created then you can add that stuff 
and start giving that to the viewer. Um, so it's okay to create that stuff, but it just comes after. Doggo, yeah, we're uh, for we're we're boarding a dog. He's been very sweet. He's he's got his. Let me see if I can. Okay, so he's poking his head up right now. <laughs> uh, he's a good boy though. Years, years, and years. O to the goat. Yes. Hell yeah. Nice pitch. Thank you, Terror. <laughs> yeah, Oda's amazing. He's just layered on so much complex and rich history that it's, um, it's like shocking how much is there that people are trying to piece together, like what the one piece is and everything. Like, um, it's great. I, I love it for that reason. My sister actually got me the fourth box set for Christmas. I already know because um she there was a there was an incident but i already have the gift it's just hi akil how's it going mr fairner what's the next game give us the inside scoop <laughs> jk please don't uh yeah actually one of the reasons why i didn't really want to work for a gaming studio anymore was because i saw too much behind the scenes like, it is cool, don't get me wrong, but uh, it also sucks in a way, because if you work especially for a game studio that you love, uh, you've played that game like a thousand I platinumed uh, the game that I worked on like eight times, because we had to test the, the medals or whatever. Um... What is it? The achievements, excuse me. We had to test the achievements. So I platinumed the game like eight times because, you know, there's an update and then you have to check it again. Uh, so seeing behind the curtain is not all it's cracked up to be. Plus, I know like things that I didn't know before that like revealed too much stuff that uh, kind of removed some of the magic of gaming for me. Um, like for instance, if you ever, if you've ever had like a door that you've had to open, but it won't quite open, and you you have to like mash the button, and they're like, Ugh, or they're like opening a door, and they're like, Ugh, right? The reason that they do that, I'll, this is video game magic, uh, is because they're loading the next section of the game, and they need a minute. This is literally the only reason why they have those. It's not to make the game more interesting uh or like to give you something to do <laughs> it's literally because uh they need time to load the next area and to deload the previous one that's why if you've ever seen like speedrunners or something uh break a game like uh the, the next area like won't load or something because they didn't go through that little like cutscene. I'm doing good, thank you. Eight times, dude. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot. I mean, thankfully Uncharted is a fun game, but like, damn, uh, it was it was a lot. Uh, I think the speedrunners did it really fast, uh, and they broke the game to do it, but we had to do it the normal way to make sure that all the achievements popped. So. You at at a certain point you start getting good at getting the achievements, um, you know. I'm not to toot my own horn, but I I feel like I'm slightly above average when it comes to video games. So I've I was definitely one of the first few people, aside from the speedrunners, that uh, was able to finish that task. Um, some people took a lot longer. But yeah, I, I didn't like hate my time with it or anything. It was it was great fun. They treated us really well. Uh, 
I would love to like if I ever got the opportunity to do like um a video with Naughty Dog in the future, be like, hey, I was a former QA now YouTube artist, <laughs> like can we do a tour of your studio and your next game? Um and I can talk about where I used to work and stuff. I think that'd be a cool a cool video, cool experience. Sounds like they're working on something new and top secret as well, so. But that could be really fun. Oh man, our music is gone, huh? Oh, uh, let's do something new. Hopefully this isn't bad. I'll change it if it's bad. You didn't have a shortcut to playtest late game features. Having to replay the whole game just to check if one new feature works sounds unnecessary. Um, I mean, as far as I know, that's how you gotta do it. Um, there, I mean, that's that's why on you know their games are typically rather bug free because <laughs> they're very thorough, and they have a large team of testers. If, if there was a faster way, they didn't tell us. You know. Hi Doge. Um, do I remember you? I usually remember everybody who comes in here. I believe I do remember you coming in, but I, I'm not 100% sure. Maybe it's different between types of games. Yeah, that might be true. Oh yeah, and QA testers definitely deserve higher pay. It's, it's really important. To game dev stuff. Again, Naughty Dog was really unique, supposedly, because I heard from other testers who had worked at uh, other studios. Apparently, Naughty Dog was really unique that we actually worked with the developers and stuff to uh, fix bugs. And I heard that at other studios, it was very. almost like the QA team was really not as respected. <laughs> right? Um, which is sad. Uh... But like, I, I actually, like I was assigned to uh, the VFX team and like a couple of like the level designer and stuff. So when there were bugs to be worked out um i would speak directly to those team members and it was a very it was a very positive experience like they they listened to us uh sometimes they would take our feedback on like how things could be improved so you really felt like you were um a part of the process and not just like this shitty cog that they just had to listen that there was a problem with whatever they did you know they we were we were respected and that is a good very nice thing Imagine if I had to manually spin to generate a big win animation a lot slot game I worked on just to check if my animations look good that'd take forever. 
Yeah, that's true. Um, but that is, <laughs> to be fair, that is the, I mean, you could make, you could program it right to make sure that it shows your animation, but to know that it works in, in the wild, like it actually does what it's supposed to do. Um, the only way is for it to actually happen because there are sometimes bugs that are very specific um, so <laughs> that's probably like a time-saving measure but the only way to actually know is really to, to have it happen by chance as it's supposed to right You have a menu that generates all the different wins to save time. Oh, okay. Yeah, we had like a dev uh, menu as well that gave us access to a lot of stuff. Two-way testers do stuff like mass click the spin button. They have like a ton of old phones just to check compatibility and performance on different devices. But yeah, um, I'm not even sure because they and you know Uncharted came out on the PC, so I'm not even sure what they did for testing for that because they weren't doing any PC work while I was there. Oh yeah, we had to check compatibility on devices as well. Anything you're doing for the holidays for? Or Akil, since you're here now too.
Uh, I'm gonna celebrate with family at my sister's place. I usually buy gifts so I find a handful of things that I know match the stuff to my nephew's interests. Oh, nice. I was gonna buy the board game ticket to ride, but holy shit, it's like over 100 euros. Board games have really exploded in recent years. Yeah, some of the like cooler board games, I've noticed that too. I've I've heard about Ticket to Ride because I for for a while was looking for something really interesting to do, uh, like a really interesting board game, and that was one of the popular ones. But yeah, they're freaking. They are pricey. Dang. I have both Cluedo and Monopoly at home. I played it some years ago. It was pretty fun and easy to learn. You know what I found the other day when we were looking for gifts? Um, do I have my phone? Oh. Uh, this really cool looking book. I haven't tried it yet, but they have a website and it looks like you can do like little cool puzzles on their website as well. Uh, this might be something you can do for. Uh, it was called, let me make sure I can show this on the screen. I took a picture of it. It's called Myrtle. And if you look up that word, you can actually find their website and they have um, clues. But it's a hundred elementary to impossible mysteries to solve using logic, skill, and the power of deduction. It was in the puzzle section at the bookstore. <laughs> and it looked so much fun. I was like, oh, I should do this with my family. And then we can compare answers and see if we get the same stuff. It, it was like a, a whodunit type of puzzle book. Played it some years ago, it was pretty fun and easy to learn. Started to occasionally have board games at my job, it's been really fun, but a lot of new board games can be really complicated, yeah. I kill, I've never played Cluedo. Is that, is that like a version of Clue? Oh, it is a version of Clue. Oh, it's just another... <laughs> Clue is really fun. Uh, my family played that before. I like Clue.
need to check on this gloom. He's a place guard here called gloom. The cards are transparent. The gloom go to your family. <laughs> family members before anyone. <laughs> gloom, that sounds fun. Oh my god. You know one of the... Oh, this looks interesting. Mm. Oh, are these the same people that made, uh... Uh... Oh no, maybe not. Looks like it might be the same artist group. As, uh, Munchkin. We have those cards. That seems funny. It's very Tim Burton-esque. You used to play with Pokemon cards. The issue is that you need to have multiple packs for that element coverage. Other than that, it's fun. Playing Pokemon was fun. I also played Yu-Gi-Oh! back in the day. I feel like a lot of people never played Pokemon. It was just like collecting. Which is shocking. I want to draw this character here. Don't do that. Down here. You're back. Alright, Akil. Let's see when you get back. Uh, prevent your opponents by giving their family luck and fortune so they're the opposite of trying to survive. Played it a lot in college. I replied to play the Digimon card game. I tried to understand, but it was way too complex for 12 RB. No. Watch the show. Never play the card game. Hmm. True, I gave up once reading it. <laughs> it's all right. Um, I think the one of the most popular but also expensive board games is Gloomhaven. That's why I thought you were mentioning it first. Um. It's supposed to be kind of like a massive RPG kind of experience. It almost makes me want to play D&D. &D. That would be fun to do on this channel as well. Play like a D&D &D session and design all the characters. Ooh, and even the enemies that we face. That would be cool. <laughs> uh. mm. Never play, but I'd be down to try.
Imagine board games grown in popularity due to being similar to TTRPG. And many board games are a character that you can play into. Oh yeah, it's more uh, more depth to it. Um, so you can definitely probably get into it a little bit more and be more invested. I didn't know board games had such a big like scene though. It was like there's some very deeply passionate board game people. <laughs> I guess there's a community for everything, right? A lot happening in the next month. We're gonna be um, moving. That's uh, gonna be a trip and a half. We gotta take um, a car down for it because we're going back to SoCal, so we gotta take the car down first with the dog and then this is how we got up here but we took a u-haul and then drove that so i had to drive the drive it twice um, uh, and you know we still don't have an apartment yet because the reason we're driving that car down is because we imagine it'll be much easier to find a place with a car and being able to like actually drive around and search places. Oh yeah, didn't you say you were going to move? Yeah, uh, our lease ends at the end of January, so we want to find a place you know, before then. Ideally somewhere cheaper, where we're saving a little bit of money. We've we've been watching like the market and trying to make sure we find something and it looks like there's some good places so 
I'm excited to look around. Just haven't had the opportunity yet. To go down there and actually look at houses. Because, you know, not about to sign a lease to something that I haven't seen. That would be incredibly dangerous. <laughs> Never had Digimon cards before. Learning to play Pokemon was hell itself. <laughs> it was basically designed like uh, like Magic, wasn't it? Like Magic: The Gathering, kind of using uh, those element things as resources and stuff. Hey, Jakeo. Hey, Brett. House hunting sucks and you have limited time to look. Yeah, we basically have a month. It's honestly, it's how I've done it most times is like you tell them that you're leaving at the beginning of the month, but I don't have a place yet. <laughs> but I've always found a place. Uh, but you know, overlapping the rent like that is so. It hurts. So, you know, I try not to do that. Um, you know, not a lot of people look during or right after the holidays, so I, I'm hoping that gives us an advantage. And then, I don't really, I think I mentioned on the last stream, Quacken, how's it going? I never played Warhammer either, Akil, but um I heard lots of good things about it as well. I am excited to try that new Warhammer game. I think it got delayed a little, but looks fun. Uh, yeah, so moving and all that is, is going to be a little challenging. Um, I just want to finish that bleach project. But we're going to go, once I get settled um, and finish out the next video, we're going to go really hard into learning anatomy and finishing up that project. Because nothing is not fun. But I don't want to spend too much time on it anymore, and I, I want to bring it to a finish. I really want to understand anatomy more, and I really want to get the clothes. Like, it's, I 
have spent so long keeping characters <laughs> naked because I've had to like think I needed to learn anatomy and like master it before I can move on to the next step. Um, and while I know I don't need to do that now, I wanted to at least like learn anatomy and give myself the opportunity. So this is that opportunity. Um, so I'm ready to. be done <laughs> and move on to the next thing and that way it helps you know make all that stuff stronger uh once again alive and not dead that's good Warhammer is so cool, the lore is just, I have no words to describe it. Honestly, the whole reason I know even anything about Warhammer is because the, the actor that loves freaking Warhammer, uh, Henry Cavill. That's how I first heard about it. <laughs> Because I didn't play any um, any games that had had Warhammer in it. Which I found surprising, but I guess it hasn't had like really big... Like a AAA game, like the, the one that they're making. Yeah, I may have turned that too far. Uh, been a stressful week trying to apply to jobs, not getting a good response, a bunch of admin stuff, and being broke. <laughs> yeah, I feel you, Kraken. Um, I've been applying to jobs for like probably six months or more, and I've gotten uh, a couple interviews, and I've had some design tests, and uh, this is all for graphic design, by the way, but uh. Yeah, nothing, literally nothing. It's been somewhat frustrating. So I definitely feel your pain. <laughs> Henry Cavill dude's a war a nerd about Warhammer. Yeah, I know exactly. That's how I found out about it. He's like such a super fan. It's like every made a made a big deal about it. <laughs> of 40k is pretty cool i feel i need to roll classes to really learn how to play the tabletop game yeah that's that's where it's really popular right as a tabletop 
game, Warhammer. That's probably why I didn't know about it, because I didn't... I don't really play tabletop games. I think people are really into, like, the... the miniatures and stuff, like... painting them, and... I mean, it's cool as heck. I just... I've always been more video game oriented. <laughs> so I'm glad they're actually making a video game about it because it does seem like a cool uh, world. Whatever grim stuff you can think of, it's there in Warhammer, sort of like D&D. So you could create like a Warhammer campaign, like a D&D &D campaign, except it's just like D&D &D in space with aliens and stuff. Hmm. Maybe I'll do that. Oh, what else do we have here? Penny and stocking. That one's a good one. Little warrior. This guy. I'll do the little warrior guy first. Oops. Find it. Old Dead, I uh, just finished watching The Real Reason You're Not Better at Art, and let me tell you. <laughs> I, I'm gonna wait for you to tell me. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, Warhammer's more super complicated chess. Oh, interesting. There's other Warhammer games to play in PC, isn't there? Yeah, but I think that they are RTS games, which I've I've never like been a big RTS person. I have I played some, uh, but it's probably like my least like RTS and racing games. Probably like my least played genre of games. Um, Again, not that they're bad. It's just personal preference, I guess. Um, I, I do like them. I, I'd like to play more of them. There's too many games. <laughs> it shouldn't be a complaint, but it's like... I, I have like a massive backlog as it is. Can't find time to play anything. It's a good problem to have, I guess. Our music again. Um, let's try you. Magic guns. There's magic too. Maybe we can do some of that here. Um, if if you guys have ever seen the channel, 
uh, YouTube channel. Um, oh my God, I'm gonna forget the name. Uh, it's a bunch of Australian guys. They're really funny. They make like gaming videos, but they have like a D and D channel. I literally could go to YouTube and find them in an instant. It's just really wish I could remember the name. Arg. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. Dirty something. Viva La Dirt League. Is that what it is? Viva La Dirt League. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, Viva La Dirt League, and then they do like joking, like funny game videos, but then they also have like a D and D channel. Um, and they're, I mean, I enjoy it a lot, but it's so fun. Uh, maybe we could do something like that, except come at it from like the artist perspective, right? We could design, like if we were playing Warhammer, we could design our own Warhammer characters or. Oh, D and D characters. If we play D and D, I think that'd be fun. Okay, go there. Uh, okay, all dead. I've been diving into the psychology of art lately and gave me so much inspiration on a very important question. How to be passionate with art, to be addicted to it, to love doing it, or a more healthy approach to make it a lifestyle? Well, I have a good answer for this. Uh, it's a video that I have... I'm trying to think if I have made it. I don't think so. No, I think uh, this kind of goes hand in hand with a new philosophy that I've been working on with how to learn and make it better, which is why I know I haven't made it at all, because uh, it follows in with that whole, like, passion. Um, okay, four. Be careful. This is This is the trap that I see a lot of. Uh, especially artists that are professionals fall into because and and i i don't doubt your your intent because i know that you are you know your shit and you do have to have some sort of love for it but i remember i made a short about this a long time ago where i was like there was an artist i've actually heard it from a couple different artists but i just remember one in particular and i'm not gonna say who it is I don't want to start any drama but there were artists that were trying to ask this other professional like uh, how do I get motivated and like I can't seem to find the motivation to do it how do I get passionate I feel like I'm not passionate enough I don't come up with good ideas and the professional said that uh, you know typical answers like you, you just have to draw blah 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 but then he also said that if you don't do it you just don't love it enough and it's such a negative thing to tell a new artist um, because passion is what gets you interested in something. It is not what keeps you going through it. Um, like, yeah, you can have a maintained passion, but passion doesn't make you work hard on something day in and day out like it is it's a learned uh, 
skill of like dedication and stuff you can be very passionate about stuff but like your <laughs> your brain is your own worst enemy like it's built in a way that it pushes you w towards things that you're comfortable and away from things that make you uncomfortable and when you start something new that you are even if you're passionate about it your brain will still give you the middle finger and make you go back to watching tv right <laughs> like so to say that like to say that you don't love it or you're not you don't love it enough uh like you don't have passion for art is such a bad hot like terrible take um so I, it, uh, it always like bothers me when people say like you have to <laughs> love it to a certain degree again i know you don't mean that for but like passion is what gets you interested that's it and it keeps you interested, but it's not what makes you do the work. <laughs> Your brain always wants to do things the easy way. Or an easy way to do things. Yeah, exactly. Our brains are built for survival. Um, and unfortunately, we still have a lot of those same things kicking around in our head. But we don't have to, like, uh, survive anymore. We're not, well... <laughs> The state of the world's a little iffy, so that might change. Uh, but it's not the same. It's not the same deal anymore, um, and it gets in the way of us trying to accomplish things um, that we really love, that we're passionate about. Because you know, um, they couldn't be passionate about things when they were trying to survive. They had to conserve energy. That's the whole reason why your brain like pushes you off to things that are easy or things that are habitual, right? Is um, It's a conservation of energy. Your body is just always trying to conserve energy for the moments that you need it. Like to when you were, you know, uh, a caveman, it was you were trying to survive predators, right? So it saved energy for those moments. Um, so things it turns things into habits so what you have to do um to be addicted to art <laughs> like to be to turn passion into like dedication uh is to trick your brain into making it one of those habits so that it's one of the easy things that it pushes you towards right uh and if you can do that uh you basically successfully make yourself um, addicted to art and there are ways that you do that beyond just um, starting a habit because there are atomic habits really great book if you don't have it old dead uh, I would pick it up because it's really great about unlearning bad things and picking up things that you want to do for yourself uh, for habits I'm writing my own book because I think that there are more pieces of the puzzle than um, especially for artists. Um, so I think until I make a video on this to make it a little bit more clear, uh, I think one of the big things that you can do beyond making a habit uh, to get yourself like addicted to, to art making, there's two things. One is... Um, work only on things that interest you so if you have to learn uh perspective right um turn it into a project that is interesting to you like if you have to learn perspective and you friggin hate perspective like you have to learn it there's no getting around it um but you have something you love like we've been talking about warhammer a lot so say you love warhammer um and you know you gotta learn perspective, find some environments in Warhammer that you can use perspective on to learn perspective and then build those environments in Warhammer. Make a project around it. Um, start uh, putting props into that room and using perspective to, to really design the, to the things that you love. And then after doing a fan art piece, try to do something of your own, like a story that you wanted to create of your own. And then you'll learn perspective by doing the things that you love. 
or that you already love. It makes it so much more easier and approachable, keeps you interested for longer. Um, and the second thing that I say I think you need is uh, you have to become more curious about how to fix things than you are frustrated with your lack of skill. And that is really like a just a big mindset shift of like uh, knowing that you're gonna fail allowing yourself to be crappy at art <laughs> and not being bothered by it. like again it's gonna bother you sometimes and that's okay um it still bothers me sometimes i'm not where i want to be or i'm not good enough um, but i am more like curious about and, and excited to learn all the things that I have to learn and seeing where my art's gonna go that I am pissed that, you know, this drawing didn't come out right. And I know that's hard to say it, if you're looking at my work and you see that I'm, if I'm better than you or something and it looks like, well, he's already really good. Like, that's easy to say. Like, to me, I'm not really good, right? I, I know that I'm better than where I was and I am probably above average in many respects, but I still am not on that professional level, and that's frustrating. Um, but I still find a way to be more curious about the things that I want to learn than I am frustrated with my lack of ability. So if you can do those two things, design your, your learning around things that you love, and be super curious, uh, instead of super frustrated all the time. And then also develop, turn it into a habit, which is the whole atomic habits is start small and build up from there. And if you've seen any of my streams or the other videos that I've made, like I started at 30 minutes. It took me like six months or so to work my way up to an hour of work and then to two hours at a time. And now I'm, I can do like multiple two-hour sessions but that took a couple of years to build up <laughs> and if you try to start too big like your brain's gonna avoid it so that's why you have to start small um everything is like a progression every little bit helps uh and you just have to see it as a journey the time is gonna pass anyways so don't be hard on yourself like be your own best friend and just let the journey happen. Yeah, and it takes so long sometimes because like you said, sometimes life happens. Like right now, I really want to dive into anatomy and take that leap and really cruise through this project that I'm doing, but we had a we had a shitty accident in the family this past weekend. Um, like I was gone all day yesterday I couldn't draw and like we've been stressing out and not sleeping so like that's life I have to move this next month uh, I have obligations to make videos because I now have a sponsor um, for next month I thought that's a bad thing some are good some are bad things but life happens right and you have to balance all it all out and still find time to do the drawing and get good like you wanted to so life will happen whether you want it to or not and you have to just be okay with it know that you're gonna you're still gonna accomplish the things that you want to do and not to be bad like not make yourself feel guilty for not doing something simply because life got in the way like there's no avoiding some things it's okay for uh i actually haven't really mentioned it but on stream uh it was really scary this past weekend my sister and her uh my brother-in-law and her fiance were in a really bad car accident and thank god everybody is alive but they um you know I definitely my this my sister and the first responders saved his his life he was helicoptered out of there man it was 
It was intense and it was touch and go for a while and we're still waiting to learn more. He's been in multiple surgeries and stuff, so but we went to go visit him yesterday. Um, it was tough uh, seeing that. Um, but we are, you know, we're hoping everything works out well and we get good news and everything. Um, life happens, you just gotta stay positive and keep going. Like, what else are you gonna do? Doesn't help anybody to sit around and like mope. I mean, sometimes we, me and my wife, like, we'll have a pity party. That's what we, that's what we call it. Like, we allow ourselves to have a pity party for a little while and then we get back to it. Like, sometimes life just really hands you shit and you, you deserve a little pity party to get yourself back up on the horse. Um, again, just treat yourself like you would your best friend. You're not going to tell your best friend to like suck it up and get over it. And you're going to be like, take the time you need. May they be safe and blessed. Sorry to hear that it may recover quick. Thank you guys. Yeah, he's, he's definitely doing better. Um, we're waiting to know more. He basically, uh... Um, to give you the short and quick version of it, the guy behind them had like a some kind of heart episode, maybe a heart attack or something, I don't know the exact details. Pressed on the gas pedal, smashed into their car, it spun, they hit him again because his foot, the guy's in the back, was, he was, went into rigor mortis or something, so his foot was just still on the pedal. He pushed them into a guardrail, which cut through the car and cut through my brother-in-law's legs. Um, he still has his legs, but thankfully, uh, but it like it nicked an artery and like cut open his legs entirely. His legs are fractured and stuff, so it was definitely like that. My sister like had to. Um, hold his legs together basically until first responders showed up he was bleeding all over the place uh it was a mess it was intense um and then it, like i said he was helicoptered out of there he said to have multiple surgeries it was definitely very very scary and in intense it's been a very emotional past few days um and we're, we're thankful he still has his legs and everybody's alive, but they're definitely banged up and and still in the thick of, of everything. Not even ready for, like, the recovery portion yet, so... Um, it's just, it's been wild. Your life can literally change in a second, so you might as well do what you enjoy while you can. And, you know, this is why I want to help people do all this stuff. Like, some people will give up doing art uh, because they think they won't make it and it's scary. And it, it is scary. Um, but if you have the right tools, you can definitely do it. I think people just don't realize that. Speedy recovery, amen. Thank you. Uh, any mental health resources help process the trauma? I don't think that they're there yet for, like, he's literally coming off a ton of drugs, like, to keep him safe, so he's, like, hasn't even had time to register what happened to him quite yet, so... I'm sure they're gonna get there. Um, my my sister uh, and him, they're very, you know, they have lots of friends and support and family, and um, I, I'm sure they're taking care of all that, and they'll get there too. I think your book is gonna cover a lot of that. It's gonna be great. Yeah, no, thank you. Um, 
the book is extensive i want it to be i want to create two like basically bibles of the first one is literally the mental like literally any mental struggle that you can think of art block like like you said being passionate how do you be passionate and stay invested in your work um uh, how to make a habit all that stuff the mental blockades to doing art and the second part would be the physical part like how do you actually improve and do the thing um i feel like the especially the mental part um not many people cover that like nobody talks about that in art school right they're just like here's your homework <laughs> go do it um they, they, I find that they don't talk about that in really any school. Like they didn't talk about that in high school or, or any college. Even when I was pursuing like computer science, they don't give you the tools to actually um, to to apply yourself to what you're learning. They don't tell you that like, oh hey, your brain is gonna. Your brain is going to fight you as you try to learn something new. Um, you know, even when I was learning about new... About the ways that we learn, like... Uh, they use really inefficient techniques to teach you how to learn things. Even though we have studies and science that shows us um, really great ways to learn, like recall and space learning um that we just don't do <laughs> even though they're more efficient we don't tell anybody about it like i literally had never heard of space learning or any of that until i looked it up for myself for art um i should have been taught that in like high school it would have made learning stuff so much easier so it's just it's so frustrating we're not given the tools to succeed um so I'm going to make sure every artist has got those tools and uh, and that they're accessible. That nobody feels like they can't afford to, to succeed, right? Each of those books should be larger than Gabri Bond. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> They'll probably be pretty big. I'm not gonna lie. I, I honestly might imagine that the... The mental health aspect of that will be bigger than the physical part. Because you could learn art in so many different ways. There's ways to be more efficient. But, like, I've learned just from communicating to you guys and through making videos on YouTube uh, that it's not always about getting from A to B, like from beginner to professional in the most efficient way possible. It also has to be fun and enjoyable and not all the most efficient ways to learn are enjoyable. Um, so, and that's gonna like hinder your progress because you are, <laughs> you're hating the journey and that's not the point you know everybody really focuses in on speed because they want to be a professional as fast as possible uh, and they see you know like this 14 year old kid who can draw way better than them and they're like 30 <laughs> just starting out and they feel super behind but again not the point it's to have your own journey <coughs> I'm gonna finish up this pose guys and then we are gonna be done for the day um, I hope everybody has an amazing holiday by the way um, and everybody stay safe people are uh, very dumb on the holidays sometimes so you know 
check the roads if you're crossing the street. Uh, you got more drunk drivers and all that kind of stuff. So just everybody be very careful this this holiday season. They just teach the cookie cutter way. Yeah, Tara, they do. Or I survived a car since as a kid. Stuff like that makes you grateful you're still around to make art at all. Oh, wow. I'm glad you survived. Otherwise, you won't be here. I need you here. <laughs> this is not the right perspective. Boop, 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 boop. Hey, Zoe. How's it going? We're about to finish up here, but I am glad you made it before we finish. I hope you have a good holiday. Or you're having a good Christmas Eve. Oh, uh, so did you look at the ruby? Did you like the art style? Uh, it's... I like it to an extent. Like, I like anime stuff. Uh, I think it has, like, too much of a... How do I describe it? It's like a little bit too simplistic style. I mean, simple can work, but the design, when you, the simpler you get, the stronger the designs have to be. Um, and I'm just not as big of a fan of the designs, I guess, but I, I like anime stuff, so I'd have to check it out, this show. Like, you might start getting more invested. Sometimes you get invested in the characters, you know, and then and then you enjoy their designs, so. Um, there's, like, a, a cel-shadedness to them as well, and I'm not, like, as big of a fan of that. Not that I hate it, as I've watched cel-shaded stuff. I think um, there's a who's the guy Shiro Miwa. He's a manga artist, and he's done some of their design. So like the presentation really matters because his work looks really great, um, but like the cel shaded stuff doesn't look as good to me. If you look into the two hemispheres of the brain, how each function, their relation to art, with your take on art, it might inspire you a little. I'm already all ears with your approach. <laughs> really big thanks. Uh, thank you. I wish you a heartwarming holiday as well. Yeah, I hope, uh, I think it'll help a lot of people. Or I hope it does, at least. Um, and if not, I tried. Maybe it'll be one of those things where it gets really popular. <laughs> After I'm gone. <laughs> right. Stay safe. We're going to drive. Wear your seat belts. Walk around the roads. Make sure you wear a reflective vest. Oh, yeah. Kiel, it's like, uh, it's so that cars see you better. Like, if you wear all the the reflective vest, it shines so that when the lights come on you, like some people have been killed just because they they wear like all black and they cross the street and you can't see them.
Oh yeah, well four is in Sweden, so um, it gets the it gets dark really fast, um, and then in the winter, and then in the uh, in the summer the sun doesn't fully set. So <laughs> the the uh, the day night cycle is a little fun in Sweden. Um, it's a little bit different. Can I reflect the vest in my backpack? Smart man, Scribble Mouse. Such a dumb way to go. Your choice of clothing being the number one reason you're dying. Yeah, that would suck, honestly. There's, there's like a handful of ways I would say that some of the worst ways to go. Alright. We did a pretty good job with these proportions. This was the thing that I was worried about the most was cartoon proportions versus regular human. I mean, I'm making them very close to like smaller human size proportions, so it's not super off. Uh, and that's how I want my comic to be, but I'm still happy. The heads are just a lot bigger. <laughs> so I'm still happy. They're kind of three to four heads high instead of eight heads high. I like the Yowie Jinx art style. Um, I don't know what that is. Sorry, Zoe. Uh, my art style, for the most part, is just like um, uh, stylized realism, leaning towards anime. Um, the I think the newest like Street Fighter game is kind of very closely towards what I like with more you know as much towards the anime flair like not exactly I would still push it more in the anime direction <laughs> uh, but the new Street Fighter game is very uh, stylized realism and it looks super cool um, if you played any of the characters or, or seen any of the characters uh, it's kind of like the style that I I'm going for that I would like to to capture. You've seen clips of how the sun moves throughout the day and night in Greenland. It doesn't get dark there. Oh god. <laughs> no, I haven't seen clips of that. I'll have to look that up. Uh, Alright guys, I am headed out. Have a wonderful holiday. And uh, we'll catch you again next week. Next week should be mostly similar times. We might have less streams just because I'll be moving. But I will we'll figure it out. And then when we come back on January, I don't I think I'm going to try to move my entire computer with me when we drive down first. Uh, just so I can stream. But I might stream from my laptop too. So that'll be interesting. We'll see figure it out next week we at least will have some streams where we'll be normal and then <laughs> things will get a little hectic next month but we'll figure it out along the way hi doge i'm back i was one of the first viewers on your drawing skulls live stream oh okay well thank you doge i'm glad you're back uh and thank you for being one of the first viewers so um i hope you keep showing up yeah, thank you uh, for showing up, guys. Quacken4, Kiel, Terror, Doge, <laughs> Zoe. All you guys, thank you very much. Yeah, have a good, good, good day, guys. Bye, Scribble, Kiel. Happy holidays, everybody. Stay safe.